our uh, youth and young adult day, the last week of every month, we uh, ask the young adults to come forth and allow the gifts to, to manifest themselves through the, the manner of uh, the worship leader, through praying, through uh, exhorting, through ministering, and when we've seen uh, the young adults, we've seen the youth begin to grow by leaps and bounds, holy boldness, is swelling up within them and is manifesting itself in the way of uh, a, 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 a manner that is pleasing in God's sight and I'm thankful for it. Amen. And, uh, in the midst of what we're doing, one of the uh, powerful young adults, uh, some of you know, some of you may be uh, seeing for the first time in this capacity, Amen. we give God glory for uh, Brother James Morgan and his uh, wonderful family. Amen. Amen. Uh, soldiers that have, have come through, amen, on the battlefield that are in the midst of being tested and tried, but still staying. Amen. 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 We thank God for their faithfulness and for their diligence. Uh, Brother James is uh, in the midst of going through, along with uh, Brother Gary Mayo, our ordination classes, and we're uh, pumping it out. We're meeting, we're studying the word, we're, we're sharing God's word, we're praying and growing together. Amen. In grace thereby. And I'm excited for what God's doing through their life and in their life and in their family's life. And uh, in the midst of this process, he has uh, elected the opportunity to exhort uh, this month. And we believe that God's going to use him not just today, but ongoing and going to do greater and mightier things through him. Amen. So uh, for those that know him just as a brother, as a grandson, as a friend, as a fellow saint, I introduce to you, and for those that will be hearing the minister to be the ongoing powerhouse known as none other than the fireball, Brother James. What's his middle name? Somebody give me a middle name. Walter. Walter. <laughs> Brother James. We had to go there. When you come in this capacity, you got to get somebody with the government. I'm talking about the old papa put on the first attempt. And let's welcome you all to the house. And I introduce. Brother James, everybody help me say what? Put your hands together and celebrate. Hey, Walter. All right. You know it now, buddy. Walt Whistle. <laughs> Walt Whistle? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I knew it was going to be something that I wasn't expecting, but not necessarily that. <laughs> so I'm not going to be able to look at jazz while I say anything, because I know it's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> But I do want to thank all my family for coming out. Amen. There's a lot of people Amen. here, and Amen. I appreciate it, and I love y'all. So I'm going to need y'all to forgive me. I'm really not being corny, but I'm going to come out of the book of James. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm not being corny. I was led here. As a matter of fact, I, I can't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't, I can't necessarily prove it right now, but there was actually uh, two completely different things that I was going to say that had nothing to do with the book of James, but I was led by the Spirit to go here, so I am Amen. not being caught. Amen. Please forgive me. Okay. Be obedient. Amen. Like, like, like Grandma said, I got to be obedient, so Amen. I'm going to start here uh, in the book of James, chapter 1, verse 5, and me and my dad's uh, favorite number is 5. So, it's very ironic. I'm really not being caught. <laughs> Um, but right here, um, in the book of James, chapter 1, verse 5, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberal, liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given to him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So the reason why I went here is because the topic that I want to touch on uh, to begin with is the fact that we need faith. Um, it's showing you right here that if you ask God for anything because it's something that you need, 
the, the one thing that you must have along with this prayer is faith. Amen. The Bible also says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen. So these things show us that faith isn't optional. We need it. It's something that we must have. Amen. And the one thing I, I really want you to pay attention to at the end that I wasn't even going to include, but I decided to include it anyway, is the fact that it says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So double-minded. You got to realize the fact that if I pray, if I sit here and take this step where I don't usually pray and I say, all right, I'm going to get down on my hands and knees or however I go about it, and I'm going to ask God for something, I'm going to ask him for help. You got to understand that if you pray and then don't have faith on whatever you prayed on, that's exactly what he's talking about, being double-minded. And in fact, it kind of actually doesn't make sense. Because if you think about it, if I'm going to ask you for it, why would I then not believe that you're going to do it? Or the opposite, if I don't believe that you're going to do it, what is the point of me asking you for it? And so you got to understand that he says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So having these prayers and, and, and having no faith with them is going to be completely <laughs> unprofitable and it's going to be no point. Amen. So we got to understand that we need that faith. So that's the first thing. But then the second thing is that we need real faith. Oh my God. And, and if we're going to get into the topic of real faith, that means that we need a relationship. Because Amen. the one thing that I've discovered very recently is faith is not saying that I go to church every week. That's faith right. is not saying that I know a couple of scriptures. I know John 3.16. Faith yeah. is not saying, oh, I posted this status on Facebook and I was Amen. like, yo, I believe in God. Amen. None of that is faith. Amen. It feels like it when you're in the flesh at first because it's like, yeah. I was like, yeah, I believe in God. God, but that is not faith. Faith is having a relationship with God. Amen. And one of the first things that Gary ever taught me when we first became friends was the concept of a relationship with God. If you think about it, if you think about the fact that we are the bride of Christ, if you think about this relationship with God as a marriage, if you were to come and, and, and see that you're the bride of Christ and, and the fact that uh, you have this marriage relationship with God. If you only came to him because you said your prayer at night before you go to sleep, or you said your little prayer before you ate because you were like, that's just customary. That's almost like being in a marriage and you, you go through your whole day, you say what's up twice, and right before you lay down, it's like, all right, y'all love you. Good night. Right. What type of relationship is that? If you think about it, how is your husband you and say exactly what Gary said. You call this a relationship? <laughs> I, I, I came to you right before I ate. I was like, Yo, you know what? Thank you for this food, babe. Going upstairs. I came to you right before we went to sleep. It was like, love you, babe. Have a good night. In the morning, I'm gone. I'll see you at the next meal. Relationship, though. It's not a relationship at all. Amen. But if you think about it, it's not to say that in a condemning way. It's to, uh, uh, an enlightening way because if you have this actual relationship, then it develops this faith because when you have this relationship with God and you talk to him like a normal person, yeah. then you start to receive from him, you start to understand what he's saying, and you start to grow because... One of the things that I've even been learning with ministering with the guys is I had some trouble um, in my walk with trying to decipher what the enemy is trying to influence me to do and what God is actually yeah, saying. God. One of the things that they said that was powerful is the more we profit. The more you spend your time and your relationship with God, the more you become sensitive to him. So you know, oh yeah, that's your voice. I know. Now don't even bring that over here. I know that's not true. So when the enemy comes to you and says something like, Oh, you ain't going to be able to finish school. Or, oh, you ain't going to be able to get this job. Or, oh, no, this ain't going to work out for you. You can be like, nah, player. I got this relationship tight right here. I'm too, I'm too tight with a guy like that. Nah, this ain't going to work. So then, but then on the flip side, how can we prove it to you? Because don't let me sit up here and y'all be my family. So y'all be like, yeah, that sounds good. Let me prove it to you. If you look at the people that don't have a relationship with God, they're the same people that are coming to you believing what that enemy is saying. Like, yo, I must not, I'm not good enough. I'm not going to be able to get this job. I'm not going to be able to go back to school. I'm not going to be able to even get through the day. I might as well commit suicide. And then you feel that Holy Spirit in you and you like, what? You actually like believe that? Believe that because you got a relationship with him. So you know 
he's telling you right now, that don't even sound right, do it. Almost like he's talking to you, like, that don't even sound right, do it. So you need to tell them that this right here, this relationship, is what's going to free them of all of that. That's why you got to be a witness to God, because your first-hand testimony can tell somebody, oh, I can make it. Mm, so that's right. why every time I come up here, it's hard coming up here sometimes because I feel like I don't want to get in the way. But I always got a testimony because by me showing you with just my normal self that God can move in anybody's life, yes. it'll prove it for you so that you can accept it. So the, the, the concept is the relationship. It's, it's the, the real relationship. Amen. So if you think about it, if we're having it, this trouble, you, you, we want to think about what's blocking us from this relationship. What's really uh, uh, putting up a wall between us and God. So the one thing that I found to always be uh, the, the, the driving force of the wall between us and God is distractions. Amen. And distractions can be anything. Distractions can be the job. Distractions can be this girl you like. Distractions can be your car. But what I really want to touch on is the distractions of the flesh because what happens with us and what's happened to me many times is the, the distraction of chasing satisfaction. And I'm sorry for rhyming, Gary. But think about it, though. We're using our entire life chasing satisfaction. I want to become this. I want to do that. I want that. I want this. Boom, boom, boom. And if you think about it, a lot of the immature things that the Bible speaks against are childlike. If you Amen. think about it. Amen. I look at my daughter and I see all the things that God is saying about me because it's like, yo, why are you being so immature? Why are you crying about this? I got you. Right, Why are you amen. crying about food? Right. I'm getting your food right now. Right. Lena. But if you realize that she's two years old, of course she's immature. But think about you, though. You're like, but God, I need this. And he's like, yo, I got it. Yeah. How'd you wake up today? Yeah. Like, no. There are people who hope this one is you that you brought yeah. down your way to get here. And you made it. Huh? What are you crying yeah. for? It's just on a different level, so we say, oh, but I'm not a child, so I can't be immature like that. But we do it every day when we complain. The moment that we complain, we take that two-year-old childlike aspect, and we put it in the body of a 23-year-old, so we say, I'm not being like that. But yes, you are. Amen. So, so th this is the thing that, if you realize that these are the things that are distracting us, it's like, if I just get a little bit more of this, then I'll be happy. If I can just get that thing, then I'll be cool. If I can just make this much more money, then I'll be satisfied. But if you think about it, those are the things that are distracting you because being content with what you have goes a lot deeper than looking at the, the, the things that you have on the outside. But understanding that I woke up today and I didn't have to. That's right. I, I had food, water, and shelter because you know those are technically the only things that we need. So if I've got Amen. all of those on my checklist, everything else is an add-on. So exactly. if I don't have the newest iPhone, am I really going to be upset about it or am I going to understand that that has nothing to do with my life? It has Hallelujah. nothing to do with my salvation. And it has nothing to do with if I'm all right. Because if we let what I have determined if I'm all right, you're never going to be all right. So let me prove it to you. Like I said, don't let y'all be my family and me just say something. Let me prove it to you. Look at the people that have the biggest houses, but inside, they're so empty, it could fill up all of the rooms in the house. Wow. Look at the people that have the nicest cars, the nicest jobs, everything. I'm not saying that having these things is bad, but look at the people that have everything. Are they actually happy? No. You Amen. know the people at your job that got the management position made 20000 more than you, and he's way more miserable. Yes, hallelujah. All of these people around the entire world are all chasing something to fill this void. Because it's always been a void. It's like there's something missing. So the whole point of getting into this thing is, what is this thing missing? I told you about being a testimony and about being a witness. I'm here to be a witness. The thing that everybody in the world is missing in the void is a relationship with God. Amen. So come on, man. I, you, you're sitting here telling me that you found a jewel that the entire world is chasing after. And I'm saying yes. Amen. Not by my own glory. Right. Amen. But I'm saying yes. I'm not saying by my own glory at all, but I'm 
I'm saying? What his word said and everything that is said to be true, it proved to be true in my life, and I believe it, and I see it in my own life, that I feel no lack. I don't feel like there's anything that I desperately need that I'm not happy. I'm complete. I'm whole. I can give you a list of things that I could write down right now that I want, but I'm cool. So what is the point? I got a relationship with God, so I know that everything that I need, he's either providing it for me, he's either making a way for it, or he's already shown me that he's provided it already or that he got me. So I'm not worried about anything. So to fill that void that I had, having a relationship with him gave me everything that I needed because along with that is asking for things in faith. And if you need it, he provides it for you. He shows it every day. I didn't want to even tell my wife because I was going to surprise her today, but I already told her. But I've been having a, a little bit of issues trying to get my budget tight enough to fit everything that I feel like I need in it. And I've been praying and, 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 and seeking God's face in X, Y, Z, but I wasn't worried about it. We just wrote everything up. All right, we'll just do everything like this. We woke up the other day. Somebody was in my car. What? My, my papers from my glove compartment, all over the seats, mm. the middle console, everything out. And she was looking for, I think, my car. So I'm, I get in the car, I'm like, oh, okay, listen, must have did this. She never rides with me in the morning, but peep this. She was riding with me that day, and she's like, I didn't do this. <laughs> so what are you talking about? Somebody was in our car trying to get through stuff, but the crazy thing is, I just felt recently I needed to empty my wallet out for the things that were unnecessary, and I took the phone that was out of the car, I got my cards, I got everything out of the car, there was no money in there or anything. Mm. So, they didn't find anything of value, but this is the thing, I could have complained, I could have been upset, I could have been anything. I make Alyssa upset sometimes because I don't freak out. I know I do, and I'm sorry, but I can't. So I didn't freak out. I went to work that day and I got a raise. So come on, come on. Literally the same day, you're going to tell me. Now I didn't do none of that. So, oh yeah, Dad, I wanted to call you about that too, so I got to tell you. <laughs> so, but, but let me wrap it up here, though. The point is, I'm not sitting here trying to give my testimony. That's why I didn't come up with my testimony. But I'm being a witness to the fact that if you have this relationship with God, that it works out for you. So in uh, verse 22, it says, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. What I want you to understand about this part is pay attention to the part where it says deceiving. Yeah. Because we believe that we can't deceive ourselves. I'm going on this path. That's it. I'm straight. But what he's talking about is he's saying, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. That means that if I know the scriptures or I hear this about the Bible or I hear that, blah, blah, blah. But I follow God in no way in my life and in my manner. I'm deceiving myself. Right. I'm making myself believe that I'll just wait until judgment day and see if it's all right. Mm. I'll just go on and do what I want to do, but I'll do good things here and there for people and hopefully everything will work itself out. But if you think about it, right here it's telling you that you're deceiving yourself. And in verse 26 it says, If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. So if I say, oh, I'm a Christian, or if I say, Oh, I believe in God. Or if I say any of these things, oh, I, I follow Christ, blah, blah, blah. But my, my, my fruit, the things that I do don't show it. I'm deceiving myself and my religion is in vain. It's completely pointless. It's no point in me telling you I'm a Christian because when you look at my life, you don't see it. So let me wrap up here. Why is this important? Uh, why should you care? Because if I say all of these things and it's like, oh, okay, great, but you take nothing away from it, then it's no point. So, so why should you care? Let's jump over to Matthew chapter 7, verse 20. It says, wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. So by their fruits, you shall know them. That means the things that people do, that's how you identify who they really are. Amen. Because people will tell you, I'm a good person. Uh -huh. I'm this. I'm a Christian. I'm that. I'm this. But if you look at their life, it's a whole nother matchup. Amen. So what the Bible is saying is, it ain't got nothing to do with they say. It's by their fruits you shall know them. If this person says that they're good, 
but they steal, cheat, do all of these horrible things in front of you, you obviously can make out who they really are. Right. But that's not the point that I want you to think about. Because it's easy to judge people. What I want you to think about is, what do your fruit that's say it. about you? Amen. Because at the end of the day, we're trying to wait until Judgment Day to see if it works out. But until Judgment Day, what fruit are we putting in the basket that we're going to take before it's thrown? Because when you get there, you're going to look at those fruits, not the fruits that you did right here. So I can say this and that all day and all night, but the fruits that I got in this basket are exactly the fruits that I'm going to be judged upon when I get there. So if I deceive myself looking at this basket of oranges, I'm like, hey, these are apples. <laughs> and I walk around and I'm like, hey, Aunt Terry, these are apples. <laughs> you like me? Hey, Jazz, I got a basket full of apples. As <laughs> soon as I get to the throne, he goes, see that basket of oranges, you want to talk about that? Oh, you think it's going to work then? Exactly. <laughs> you ain't going to sit there no matter how uh, high-minded you are. Nobody's going to tell God, yeah, but these was apples. So right. Before I get here, right. hey, hey, no, we are not going to say that. Uh -huh. So if you deceive yourself right now when it's easy, then you're pretty much setting yourself up for failure. So the last scripture, uh, verse 21, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is, heaven, which is in heaven. That's telling you right there. He's saying not everybody that says to me, Lord, Lord, is going to make it. So if you think about it, think about it in context. Who's going to be saying, Lord, Lord, people that consider themselves to be Christian even? Even some, right? Amen. Because they're saying, but, but Lord, what, what do you mean? What do you mean I'm not good enough? What do you mean I didn't do? So don't sit here and, and make yourself believe, oh, but I, I call him God. I worship him. That that's going to be good enough. Because he's telling you right here in verse 21, just because you say it, Lord, Lord, that's not going to do anything for you. What's going to work for you is doing the will of the Father in heaven. Amen. That's what's going to work. Amen. So you right now is the time to lay aside your will and put on his will. That's why you got to die daily. Because every day when you wake up, like I know personally, you're going to be ready to do your own thing. Amen. But if you do your own thing, that's going to lead this verse 21 to be talking exactly about you. Where it's saying, but Lord, Lord. So now is the time, not later, because we already see what the world is doing. We, we clocking out at any time with right. what the world is doing now. We was just riding home. All we was doing was riding on the highway, and we could tell they got billboards now. They got cuss words on them, uh -huh. and it's like that seems so small. But what if what if get Lena's in the back? She's like, "Hey, Dad, what is blink, 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 and blink?" I'm like, "All right, well, I guess I can't protect my kids from anything anymore." Now the world is pushing it on your yes. kids. Your kids are accepting it now. They're not giving you an option like years ago when you could train your kids up at home and like my dad did, and then you go to school and my dad already warned you these people won't be tripping, don't pay them no money. <laughs> Jack, Jamie's laughing because she know. My dad already said, when you get to school, some people ain't going to be on the same page. Don't pay them no money, just let them do their thing. You, you, this is what you're doing because I said so. Right. You used to be able to do that, but now you can't. Now when they get to school, they're being taught something. When they get home and they turn on TV, they're being taught something. Uh -huh. When they turn on the radio, they're being taught something. And now you can't even make it out. It's like, what in the world is this? Right. So the point is, you have to be sure that you are doing the will of the Father. Because if you're doing your own thing, don't expect to take this basket of, of oranges up there and be like, these is apples. Amen. That ain't going to work. Amen. And I'm sorry for not being all deep. I'm not going to go there. I'm going to keep it real with y'all. But that's the point of this whole thing. Amen. So if you feel that tug on your heart, if you feel like uh, uh, what, the, what the scriptures are saying is true, I want you to come up here right now. I want to pray this out. Matter of fact, no, I want to change that. Anybody that doesn't have a hand... And I'm not being deep here. I'm just going in. Just please forgive me. I'm not being deep. Okay. Love you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I look in the mirror. Oh, I see. Oh.
How'd you go? 